the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. Chapter 1. Lucy looks into the wardrobe. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. This story is about something that happened to them when they were sent away from London during the war because of the air raids. They were sent to the house of an old professor who lived in the heart of the country, 10 miles from the nearest railway station and 2 miles from the nearest post office. He had no wife and he lived in a very large house with a housekeeper called Mrs. McCready and three servants. Their names were Ivy, Margaret, and Betty. But they do not come into the story much. He himself was a very old man with a shaggy white hair which grew over most of his face as well as on his head. And they liked him almost at once. But on the first evening, when he came out to the meet them at the front door, he was so odd looking that Lucy, who was the youngest, was a little afraid of him. And Edmund, who was the next youngest, wanted to love and had not keep on pretending he was blowing his nose to hide it. As soon as they had said goodnight to the professor and gone upstairs on the first night, the boys come into the girls' room and they all talk it over. We've fallen on our feet and no mistake, said Peter. This is going to be perfectly splendid. That old chap will let us do anything we like. I think he's an old dear, said Susan. Oh, come a bit, said Edmund, who was tired and pretending not to be tired, which always made him bad tempered. Don't go on talking like that. Like what? said Susan. And anyway, it's time you were in bed. Trying to talk like mother, said Edmund. And who are you to say when they I'm got to bed? Go to bed yourself. Harden, we all better go to bed, said Lucy. There's sure to be a row of We're here talking here. No, there won't, said Peter. I tell you, this is the sort of house where no one's going to mind what we do. Anyway, they won't hear us. It's about 10 minutes. Walk from here down to that dining room. And any amount of stairs and passage in between. What's that noise? said Lucy suddenly. It was a far large hose than she had ever been in before and the top of Aldo's long passage and row of door leading into empty rooms was beginning to make her feel a little creepy. It's only a bird silly said Edmund. It's a no, said Peter. This is going to be a wonderful place for birds. I saw God to bed now. I say, let's go and explore tomorrow. You might find anything in a place like this. Did you see those mountains as we come along? And the woods? There might be eagles. There might be stocks. There'll be hawks. Bad girls, said Lucy. Folks, said Edmund. Rabbits, said Susan. But when next morning came, there was a steady rain falling. So thick that when you look out of the window, you could see neither the mountain 
nor the woods, nor even the stream in the garden. Of course, it will be rainy, said Edmund. They had just finished their breakfast with the professor and were upstairs in their room he had set apart for them. A long, low room with two windows looking out in the one direction and two in another. Do stop grumbling, eh? said Susan. Then, to warn it, it'll clear up in hour or so. And in the meantime, we're pretty well off. There's a wireless and lots of books. Not for me, said Peter. I'm going to explore in the house. Everyone agree to this? And that was how the adventure began. It was the sort of house that you never seem to come to the end of. And it was full of unexpected place. The first few doors they tried led only into spare bedroom. As everyone has expected that they would. But soon they come to a very long room full of pictures. And there they found a suite of armor, and after that was a room all hung with green, with a harp in one corner, and then come three steps down and five steps up, and then a kind of a little upstairs hall, at hall hall and a door that led out on to a balcony and then a whole series of rooms that led into each other and were lined with books most of them very old books and some bigger than a bible in a coach and shortly after that they looked into a room that was quite empty expect for one big white drop. The sword that has a looking glass in the door. There was nothing else in the room I'll expect uh, that blue bottle on the windowsill. Nothing there, said Peter, and they all drop it out again. I'll expect Lucy. She stayed behind because she thought it would be worth while trying the door of the white door. Even though she felt almost sure that it would be low. To her surprise, it opened quite easily, and two moon balls drop out. Looking into the inside, she saw several coats hanging up, mostly long fur coats. There was nothing Lucy liked so much as the smell and feel of fur. She immediately stepped into the wardrobe and got in among the coats and rubbed her face against them, leaving the door open, of course, because she knew that it is very foolish to shut oneself into any wardrobe. Soon she went further in and found that there was a second row of coats hanging up behind the first one. It was almost quite dark in the in there and she kept her arms stretched out in front of her so as not to bump her face into the back of the wardrobe. She took a step fewer in then two or three steps, always expecting to feel woodwork 
against the tips of her fingers, but she could not feel it. This must be simply an enormous wardrobe of Lucy. Going still further in um, piercing the soft folds of the coats aside to make room for her. Then she noticed that there was something crunchy under her feet. I wonder if I wonder is that more mold balls? Stop stopping down to feel it with her hand but instead of feeling the hard smooth wood of the floor of the wardrobe she felt something soft and powdery and extremely cold this is very queer she said and went on step or two further next moment she found that what was rubbing against her face and hands was no longer soft fur, but something hard and rough and even prickly. Why, it is just like branches of trees, exclaimed Lucy. And then she saw that there was a like a head over, not a few inches away where the back of the wardrobe of to have been but a long way off something cold and soft was falling on her a moment later she found that she was standing in the middle of a wood or uh, nighttime with snow under her feet and snowflakes falling through to air Lucy felt a little frightened, but she felt very inquisitive and excited as well. She looked back over her shoulder and there, between the dark drill trunks, she could still see the open doorway of the wardrobe and even catch a gleam of the empty room from which she had set out. She had, of course, left the door open for she knew that it is a very silly thing that shut oneself into a wardrobe. It seemed to be still die like there. I can always get back if anything gets wrong. Tough Lucy. She began to walk forwards, crunch, crunch over the snow, and drove the wood towards the other lights. It's about ten minutes. She reached it and found it was a lamp post. As she stood looking at it, wondering why there was a lamp post in the middle of a wood, and wondering what to do next, she heard a bitter patter of feet coming towards her. And soon after that, a very strange person stepped out from among the trees into the lights of the lamppost. He was only a little taller than Lucy herself, and he carried over his head an umbrella, white with snow. From the wise upwards, he was like a man, but his legs were sharp like a god. The hair on them was glossy black, and instead of feet he had good hoofs. He also had a tail, but Lucy did not notice this at first, because it was neatly covered up over the arm and held the umbrella so to keep it from trailing in the snow he had a red woolen marvelous round his neck and his skin was rather reddish too he had a strange but pleasant listened a little face with a sword pointed 
Bird and Curly Hair. And out of the hair, there stuck two horns, one on each side of his forehead. One of his hands, as I have said, held the umbrella. In the other arm, he carried several brown paper parcels. What with the parcel and the snow, it looked just as if he had been doing his Christmas shopping. He was a phone. And when he saw Lucy, he gave such a stare, start of surprise that he dropped all his parcels. Goodness, 